Good morning, everyone. We just want to welcome you to our morning worship this morning. We want to welcome you, th those of you who are watching us and worshiping with us on our different social media platforms, and those, of course, who are here with us live and in person. And we um, encourage you to worship God any way that you choose. We just want to feel the enthusiasm, the new experience with God this morning. So worship and enjoy. All right? That's right. Let us worship and enjoy. Wow, am I really, really loud? Holy cow. That's not good. How's that? Is that better? A little bit better? How's that? Is that much better? Nobody wants to hear me that loud. I know, but Debbie has to live with me, so... It happens. Anyway, Pastor Faye is right. There's excitement for us to worship today. So we give thanks to this community in all ways, shapes, and forms for visitors, for family, for guests, for those worshiping virtually. Welcome. Today we end our series in the month of August on the human Jesus. And today we focus on love, a four-letter word that's elusive, so challenging, so misunderstood. It is used to justify abuse, used to justify violence, used to justify sacrifice, used to justify caring and compassion. How can this word love help you in your losses, in your illnesses, in those oppressions you experience, in the unfairnesses and the inequities that occur in your life, in the aging that you experience and the disappointments? How does love connect you to Jesus? That's what we're going to consider today. So we ask that Holy Spirit to descend upon this place in all ways, shapes, and forms, to descend upon it in ways that whatever's going on in our hearts, our minds, our souls, may Jesus, may God, may the Holy Spirit Spirit, change things for you, that you experience a love like none other, the love of Jesus, the love of God, and may you be transformed today. So let us worship. For those that are able, stand as we begin our call to worship. The call to worship can be found in your um, bulletin, so let's stand and open up our worship. Yes. Family of God, as we gather today, Jesus asks us, what, what, who do you say that I am? You are the Messiah, Messiah, the, the Son, Son of, of the, the living God. God. Family of God, as we gather today, the Holy Spirit asks, Who do you say that I am? You, you are, are our comforter, comforter advocate, advocate, and sustainer. Family of God, as we gather today, God the Father asks us, Who do you say that I am? You are our creator, provider, and healer. Family of God, as we gather today, the triune God asks us, Who do you say that I am? You are love that creates, saves, and enfolds us into the family of God. May we be instruments of love in all that we are and all that we do. Amen. Let's sing nice and loud, Blessed Assurance number 369 in your blue hymnals. Let's sing so loud those down the street will run over to us.
this time, we are going to pass the peace. And first, we want to pass the peace to those who are watching virtually. Peace be with you. And I just want to pass the peace to you. Peace to you, Pastor And also to you. Good morning, peace be with you. Okay. That's enough talking. I have to talk now, Vi. <laughs> you know what? In the first service, we were done at 59 minutes. Let's see what happens today here. <laughs> we'll see. You never know. You never know. It depends on how much I want to preach. All right. I think we're at the life of the church, aren't we? Yes, we are. So. Life of the Church, a couple um, things is, anybody know what um, next week is? That's right, Labor Day holiday. So we have an intergenerational blended unity service. That is at what time? 10 a.m. So if you come at 11, we will say, thank you for coming, goodbye, have a great weekend. <laughs> if you come at 10 a.m., you're going to worship with us. So set your clocks in our head. You will receive a calling post if you're on our calling list. So you will get a phone call on Saturday. You may get multiple phone calls depending on how many numbers we have of you. To remind you, it should be on our sign outside. It'll be in the emails. But next week's service is 10 a.m. All of us worshiping together um, to celebrate the holiday and uh, let people have a break of having to come at 9 and 11, <laughs> come at 10. That's and in Zion week. Hall, too. Yes, in Zion Hall. Um, uh, and we'll have hymnals there. Everything will be good. The sump pump donations um, are coming in. We're doing really well, but we haven't made them all yet. So um, there are still envelopes out there if you want to pick one up. Again, if each envelope comes back with the denomination that is on that envelope, we will raise $5,050, uh, which won't completely offset $7,000, but it'll come close. So um, we're still hopeful for that. What is happening on the 23rd? of September. Lots. We have Warminster Day and uh, Worship Fest. So Warminster Day is being led by Pam and um, Dwayne. I was going to say Gary, but it's Dwayne Deering. Um, so next week there'll be sign up sheets uh, for that. And then um, Sam um, and Faye Pastor Faye, God, I'm really horrible with names, um, are going to help lead the worship fest um, experience. So 
at both places there's gonna be a table um, there'll be activities for people to do when they come up especially like getting creating little thankful or blessing bracelets that people can make there's other giveaways you get to talk about the church at Carson Simpson there'll be games that will be near our table that people can play you can play them so we're just looking for people to help us make sure those tables are um, staffed at both locations Warminster days is 10 to 4 11 to 4 11 to 4 and then Carson Simpson's 12 to 6 so I'll be getting back in town at about 2 o'clock that day. Um, probably go over warm Mr. Days for a little bit to say hi and then head on over to Worship Fest and be there. So that is happening the 23rd, and we're looking for lots of um, people to help us out. Has anybody noticed what's in front of the office? Yeah, there's a little worship reflection center. So Karen is leading that. And monthly now, that will change based off of our series. And we know Don leads our bulletin board in the back there. So there'll be these really cool questions that will be out there on the table. We are open 9 to 2 every day, Monday through Thursday, except for Fridays. So anybody can come and uh, look at that. You can come in the sanctuary and pray. You can kind of sit in the narthex and just think about things. Um, you can do it on Sundays. But it's there for you for an extra prayer activity, uh, part of our prayer initiative. Uh, but they're just questions that really help us. Uh, reflect on our faith so that is out there also the rest is in their bulletin that you can look at anybody else have anything that i may have missed because something was mentioned in the second service i forget what it was oh somebody asked me about the two cans of soup remember my email i asked about how two cans of soup and um other things all work together so here's what's going to happen anybody remember megan Remember Megan being here? She's going to come back next Sunday. Um, I'm working with her. We're going to support her ministry in a couple different ways. One is she'll probably start using one of the offices downstairs for some administrative work. Um, and then some of the stuff that we collect will go to her ministry. So she was here Thursday picking up um, um, chocolate bars, candy, um, and um, some other cookies and some other things for their ministry on Thursday. But what she said is sometimes they give her things that she can't use on the street. So some cans of soup, how do you prepare that when you're on the street, right? So she doesn't want to say no to people giving her things, but she can't use it. Well, guess what we have? We uh, collect food for whose food bank? Lehman's. So guess what? Those two cans of soup was a gift that she gave to us. We had collected things that were a gift to her, so it'll be a partnership of synergies. Um, and that's where those two cans of soup come into play. She'll probably get donations that we can use. We'll get donations that she can use. So she'll be here on Sunday at uh, Unity Service to talk more about that partnership we're forging ahead with. Um, and one day this church will go to Kensington. Maybe it'll just be me and Pastor Faye. That's okay. It'll still be the church going, right, Pastor Faye? That's right. Maybe Sam will go with us. Maybe not. <laughs> All right. I think that's it for the life of the church. So the recognition of service and ministry. Uh, what did I do uh, for service? It was about the home visitation. Oh, that's right. That's right. The, that's right. So um, one of the things that um, we are now doing um, well, first of all, we all know that we have an incredible um, shepherding team that calls all the time and a care team that will go to people's houses or, or make visits. With Pastor Faye on board, she is helping the lead initiative we had talked about but never got a chance to actually implement. And it's an initiative for those that are shut in and can't um, come out. So like Margaret Wallers, who is faithfully watching us every week, who we call, we talk to. So Faye and Carolyn went over and hung out with uh, 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 Margaret for, thir uh, for on Thursday and then we went to Wesley Enhanced Living um, and we hung out with Ella May, Janet, uh, Bill and Sid. Ella May started coming here in 1965 and helped found what? The preschool along with Charlotte and so now we're going to go over there monthly, whether we do communion or just kind of talk to them, pray with them, because um, there's members of this church that are there and they just can't make it here. Um, so we're expanding our outreach and Pastor Faye is helping to lead that and she has an incredibly caring heart and did those kind of caring ministries prior to coming here. Um, so we want to give thanks and praise for all of our caring ministries, which includes the shepherding team, which includes this new initiative of going to those that are shut in. So let's give a round of applause to everyone that's involved in those caring ministries. 
All right. We have some special music by Sam, who is our choir director and outreach director. So we're excited to hear. And you guys can clap really loud at the end. All right. All right. Hello? Is this on? Yeah. So this song is probably less known, but I thought that the lyrics um, match with the message today. So if you don't know the melody, you can uh, listen to the words. You bled your heart out, now I feel love beat in my chest. How wonderful you gave your beauty in exchange for my ugliness. How wonderful you left your perfection and embraced our rejection. Whoa, how marvelous, how boundless is your love, is your love. How wonderful, sacrificial is your love for me. You put on our chains, sent us out through the open door. How wonderful. You took our sadness, crowned us with joy and real peace. How wonderful. You left your perfection and fought for our redemption. Whoa, how marvelous, how boundless is your love, is your love. How wonderful, sacrificial is your love for me. Yes. Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, how wonderful, yes, Jesus loves me, and this is love you gave yourself, how marvelous, how boundless is your love is your love how wonderful sacrificial is your love for me amen amen all right all right how wonderful how marvelous how sacrificial thank you thank you so much for that Joyce? Yes. Um, now we're going to have Joyce. Who has a joy to share? No Joyce? All right. <laughs> Did you have any ideas? Well, I'll get her first, then I'll come to you. Well, I, I have a list today. First of all, this beautiful day, and I thank God for all the beautiful weather we've been having, and even the bad days, because we need it all. But anyway, um, I, uh, it's a joy to see Jim Caludi back. We missed him last week, and uh, he's back and looking good. And I was going to mention the visitation as well, and assure all the homebound that Pastor Faye and I do have you on our list, and we will be coming to your hometown, so stay tuned. Sounds like Santa. <laughs> and um, last but not least, uh, the Phillies are really doing great, so praise the Lord. <laughs> Guess where I was last night? Yeah. All right. Third baseline. It was a good game, wasn't it? Yeah. All right. That's a joy. <laughs> I'm certainly glad to be uh, back this week. I thank everyone for their prayers and their well wishes. Uh, I think they really worked. Excellent. Amen. Any other joys? Let's see. We got Judy saying Ken and her are enjoying their cruise. They miss us. Lots of people watching us saying good morning. 
Okay. All right. And I just want to piggyback on Carolyn's joy. Yes, it's a joy just to be able to wake up today. As I preached last Sunday, it's not our alarm clocks, it's not the birds chirping, right? Or it's the sun beaming through the um, window. It's God's grace that decides we're going to wake up today. So that's a joy. Amen. No more joys? All right, concerns. Uh, you recall the girl that was abducted in Haiti? She and her husband and their little one is safe in the United States, but she's, they have three adopted children that are still in Haiti, and uh, they're having a difficult time getting their visas, and who knows when they're gonna ever going to get here. Yeah, well, and just praying for those that were kidnapped mm -hmm. and that trauma they now carry yeah. and having to heal from that, yeah. Also, the next one is for the people in Lahana and Maui. Yeah. Um, Hawaii needs a lot, a lot of help. Uh, Maui, anyway. Uh, trying to keep their land away from the people with money that want to build hotels, motels, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So trying to preserve their land is top priority. They cannot get stuff shipped in easily. So the Red Cross is having a difficult time getting their stuff in. I have a list of organizations that are in Hawaii and in Maui itself uh, that I gave the slip to Pastor Dave. He'll be putting it out uh, on email. But they're all local organizations such as our Phil Abundance and that type of thing. They're right there. Thank you. Any other concerns? Just continued prayers for my sister-in-law, Kate, with back issues and some other um, related health issues, and then my Aunt Joyce, other back issues and health concerns. Any other concerns? Yeah, it was kind of a joy and a concern. Like, a concern was my brother had just, he went to the hospital a few days ago, had a lot of respiratory problems, and uh, I was kind of really worried. And I got some good news lately that it seems like it's not as bad as it could have been. It's just, yeah, it's like a seizure, and they got him under control now, and I was really upset the other day, thinking, you know, it was really, you know, because it didn't sound too good, but thank, thank God that you know, he looks like he's pulling through and he's gonna be a lot better. And as long as he takes care of himself, he tries to do better in the future. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We'll continue to pray. Um, first, this is sort of good news. My sister, Ginny, who has the hole in her macula, she is scheduled for surgery, not till November 27th, which is their first available, but um, she's very hopeful that that will help. And also for a new acquaintance that's making important decisions about pancreatic cancer, so. Any other concerns? Prayers for Dot. Um, she's still recovering, and medicine is up and down and trying to struggle on how to kind of do that, plus see follow-up appointments. Um, and the complication with Dot is Bob is um, at uh, the park at Gloria Day. Um, I've been visiting him frequently. I just saw him yesterday. He was actually outside, which is great. He had walked out on his own. So I talked to him for a few moments and prayed. Um, but just for his continued struggle and what this all looks like for him. Um, so prayers for both of them. Uh, we want to always remember the violence that's occurring and prayers for harmony and unity and peace because um, we're not seeing it. Right. Almost every day there's two shootings, one shooting, six shootings. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the criteria is if four people are killed, it's a mass shooting. So I, I saw the number, it was like 400 plus mass shootings already this year. Um, so just the violence is out of hand. So prayers that harmony happens. Yes. And I just want continued prayers from my brother who um, needs his cataracts removed and so um, we're trying to get a date for that surgery so it can take place really soon. He needs both eyes done. And I don't see any concerns on Facebook so let us prepare yes. for worship or prepare for prayer. Yes.
Dear gracious and marvelous God, you are the creator. You are the miracle worker, mind regulator, peacekeeper. God, we lift you up in prayer, God. We lift you up praising your name. We lift you up thanking you, God. And we pray with expectations, God, that you will answer. And sometimes the answer that you provide is not what we want or can easily accept. But God, we know that your will is always best. So help us, enable us to accept our will. And we lift up to you, as Pastor Dave said, the violence, God, that just doesn't seem to stop, God. We lift up those who are ill. We lift up those who are in the hospitals and nursing facilities, God. We ask for your healing. We ask for your comfort, God, for so many of us have lost loved ones, and we are still suffering. We are still grieving, God, but we know that you are the greatest comforter, God, so we ask for your assistance, for your help, for your divine love and healing. We ask for peace and unity. So oh God, we do. We ask for these things because we know that you want us to live in that way. So oh God, you heard the cries of your people. You heard where we need you to intercede. But oh God, we also, you also heard our joys. Those areas that bring um, smiles to our faces. Those areas in which our hearts jump for happiness. So oh God, we give you thanks for blessings that abound in the middle of our illnesses. Blessings that abound in the middle of our concerns. Blessings that abound in the middle of our worries. Blessings that abound when we are living in scarcity, but yet you are God of abundance. And so you begin to teach us and show us how abundantly blessed we are. So oh God, we give you thanks and praise for that. And oh God, we ask that the path that you have provided for us, a path that is different yet similar, that you fill us with your courage and your strength to walk that path with you, that you fill us with comfort and a peace that surpasses all understanding as we navigate this time with you. And, oh God, we ask that you help each of us to follow you, for we know when that we follow you, amazing things happen. So help us as a church to follow you so this church can be your hands and feet in this area at this time. We do this because you showed us how much you love us by dying for us. You showed us how much you care for us by going to death for us. So, oh God, let us together in unison remember those same words you taught us so many years ago. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And so now we're doing something new. It is silent time with connecting with God and reflection. So let us just begin this time by just silence. And as we sit in the silence, where do you hear God talking to you? In this silence, Invite Jesus into your life. In this silence, invite the Holy Spirit to envelope you with love and care. In this silence, Invite God's love into your life. In this silence, hear God. As you sit in this silence, close your eyes if they're not already closed. And as you sit there, imagine a scene over 2,000 years ago. Jesus is exhausted, tired, and sits at a well. 
a well from Jacob's time and just sits. And then someone comes to that same well and they begin to talk. Imagine the conversation Jesus is having with you if you were the one at the well. What is Jesus telling you? Whatever Jesus has shared is for you. So with gratitude, express your thanks to Jesus. In this silence, may you always talk with Jesus. Yes, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for the opportunity to be in your presence. And Jesus, just continue to embrace us and to love us, God, in any way that you choose to speak to us. And let us be receptive to it, all in your mighty and marvelous name, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 And so now let us prepare for scripture by singing a song that is printed in your bulletins that says something like something. Nothing but, nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. <laughs> what number does it say? Uh, page 362. All right, 362. Stand if you can. Nothing but the blood. Nice and loud so the neighbors can hear us. Amen. You may be Amen. Seated. Amen. And so, response of reading. Yes. Oh, that's right. And there to oh, stand. My gosh, response. See, you know what? <laughs> that was my fault. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> my fault on that one. Let's do the response of reading. You yes, can stand if you want. Stand. If you already said it, that's okay. <laughs> that was my fault. I was going right into the scripture. All right. All let's right. do response of reading. All right. God, without you on our side, our troubles would swallow us up whole. Guide us, merciful God, as we navigate through the muck and mire in our lives. 
Help us to trust your guidance. Our help, help is in the name, name of the Lord, Lord who made heaven and earth. God, without you on our side, disasters would overwhelm and sweep us away. Protect, protect us, merciful God, and inspire us to give and receive help when we face times of calamity and destruction. Our help, our help is, is in the name of the Lord, Lord who made heaven, heaven and earth. earth. God, without you on our side, the suffering of the world would overtake us, arresting us with the enormity of human need all around us. Help our hearts remain tender, merciful, God, that we would meet the suffering in ourselves, our families, and our neighbors with compassion and care. Our help, help is in the name, name of the Lord, Lord who made, made heaven and earth. earth. God, without you on our side, the conflicts and discord that surround us would leave us full of distrust and suspicion. Heal us, merciful God, that we may be agents of restoration, peace, and help everywhere we go. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Thanks be to God, who guides, protects, heals, and helps us now and forevermore. Amen. Flip that piece of paper over and here's our scripture today's scripture is found only in the gospel of john this gospel is written for a small group of followers of jesus who are trying to figure out what it means to follow the risen christ the scripture today is towards the end of a very large story and in those four verses we see the disciples astonished jesus is doing something they expect him not to do but don't question him we see a woman so embraced by Jesus' love that she left her life-giving water jar to go tell others to come and see Jesus. Love is transformational and drives action. Do you experience Jesus' love in transformative ways? What have you left behind to follow Jesus? And the scripture is John 4, verses 27 to 30. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. This is the word of God for all people. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Faye. So today is one of those sermons, the title of the sermon, that a song or songs would be perfect to use, like, all you need is love, all you need is love. No one can save that can't be saved, all you need is love. All you need is love. Nothing can be seen that isn't shown. Nowhere you can be that isn't where you're meant to be. All you need is love. All you need is love. Oh, but somehow that fits, but not quite. So what about this song? Well, she was just 17, and you know what I mean. And the way she looked was way beyond compare. How could I dance with another when I saw her standing there? Well, she looked at me and I could see that before too long, I'd fall in love with her. She wouldn't dance with another when I saw her standing there. Well, my heart went boom when I crossed that room I, and I held her hand in mine. Well, we danced through the night and we held each other tight. And before too long, I fell in love with her. Now I'll never dance with another since I saw her standing there. I mean, that does kind of connect, but not really. All right, what happens if we look at the concept of the water? Because we're at a well. So there's a song called Come to the Water. And the lyrics are these. Oh, let all who thirst, let them come to the water. And let all who have nothing, let them come to the Lord. Without money, without price, why should you pay the price except for the Lord? And let all who seek, let them come to the water. And let all who have nothing, let them come to the Lord. Without money, without strife, why should you spend your life except for for the Lord. Again, that just doesn't seem to cut it. So finding a song for the beginning of the sermon just doesn't fit. So what does? Because these songs are about love, water, and a woman, 
That's the story we have today about love, water, and a woman. So let's back up and see about this entire story. The chapters leading up to chapter 4 in today's scripture in the Gospel of John, we first have water being turned into wine, and then we have spiritual discussions at night about a rebirth with Nicodemus, that's right. And then we have the conversations about baptism with John and who's baptizing and Pharisees having trouble that Jesus is going to baptize. And then we have this story. I mean, all of that seems a little strange to fit this story in. Because first, it's a story of just Jesus. The scriptures just say Jesus is traveling to this land and has to kind of go into this place that he probably shouldn't, but he's tired, so he's going to do it anyway. And then in the scripture, there's this parenthetical reference in parentheses that says the disciples now went to go buy food. So that's a weird setup. Jesus is going by himself, and all of a sudden the disciples showed up. It's not Star Trek. And now all of a sudden in the story, Jesus is tired and sits at the well at noon, because it's not really being used much at noon back then, but maybe someone will come to him. So he just sits, tired, thirsty. Maybe he's not thirsty or tired, but he sits for this unspecified amount of time, and a woman comes by, a woman from a group of enemies to the Jews. And to this enemy, Jesus asks for water. So why don't the songs about love, standing there, or water, not work? Because this story isn't about water and rebirth or love. It's about being seen. In fact, one cannot be seen unless there is love. Are you seen in your entirety? Are you seen in your depression, in your anxiousness, Are you seen in your shame and guilt? Are you seen in your fears, in your hopes and dreams? Or do you hide things from others? What do you hide from your family, your partner, your spouse? What do you hide from God? Are you seen? It's easy to say it's good to see you, and it's easy to say it's good to be seen. But being seen isn't just what my eyes see. It's being seen in the inside, the heart and soul level. To be seen means vulnerability. To be seen means to let go. And to be seen means to be willing to show who you are without judgment and to feel free. Being truly seen is freeing because it is a deep acceptance of who you are, but yet we don't let others see us because we're afraid of judgment. We interpret and judge because we don't want to be seen. And if we don't want to be seen, how can we see others? Are you seen? What causes you not to be seen? How do you see yourself, in fact? Because oftentimes, we can't see ourselves. We ignore those areas we don't like. We defend against them. And for us to see ourselves, we need to bear our unmentionable, so to speak. We need to be so humble that it doesn't matter how we're judged. To see ourselves, we need to honestly be honest with ourselves, with those areas we don't like. We need to embrace the traumas we carry, embrace those things we don't like about ourselves, embrace the aspects of ourselves that are downtrodden and forsaken, embrace our guilt and shame. It's not easy because it's much easier to hide these aspects from ourselves and others. But there is one, one, one who always sees us, sees you and I, one who sees us and loves us regardless, one who challenges you and I to be honest with ourselves. There is one, the same one that was at that well that morning or that afternoon, Jesus. Jesus always sees you. And the Samaritans and Jews didn't like each other. Anybody actually know why they didn't like each other? 
Oftentimes, this part of the scripture, uh, they talk about the immorality of the woman. It's a very huge distortion in biblical interpretation. The Samaritans actually worshipped the same God, the Abrahamic God. It's how they worshipped that God was the disagreement and where they worshipped that God. So Jesus and the Jews worship in Jerusalem. These others worship in the mount. It's actually part of the initial scripture. So a disagreement between these two creates enemies. Sounds like 2023, doesn't it? Especially around churches. And in addition, this woman is living in a patriarchal society and all women back then were seen as less than. And yet Jesus sees her as full, as worthy, as included. Do you see yourself as Jesus sees you? As full, worthy, and included? Or do you see yourself as less than? I know my answer. What about you? Feeling full, worthy, included is not easy because to fully, fully feel that way, we need to love all aspects of ourselves all those things others have told us we are wrong about the judgments place people place on us the judgments we place on ourselves this unnamed woman is your and mine's role model for loving self because when jesus sees her all of her her religious beliefs her life story jesus loves her completely and fully and asks to be part of her life in the beginning, she first said no, and then she started to hold a conversation, and then excitement ensues. Isn't that faith development? First, we're like, I don't know. Then we begin talking, and then we have excitement. When Jesus sees all of her, she's okay with this, and she's honest about who she is. Jesus sees all of you. What do you hide from Jesus? Triggers are challenging. In fact, triggers are those areas that we are unhealed in, areas we don't like about ourselves, areas we feel judged and shamed. This woman would have been triggered, but instead she was in touch with herself and didn't let her trigger go off, but engage in a conversation with Jesus. When you're triggered, you can't be seen because all that is seen is that trigger. Where in your life do you not accept Jesus seeing you? To see another, to see yourself, you need love. Maybe that song does work. All you need is love. The love Jesus has for you is inclusive, transcends any human behavior or action. The love Jesus has for you sees you, all of you. Jesus was love in this moment with this woman. And yet when the disciples returned, they couldn't imagine what was going on. They only say Jesus is talking to a forbidden, forbidden fruit, a Samaritan woman. They didn't see her because they didn't have love for her. And yet Jesus' love transformed her. And in excitement, she runs off to tell others, leaving the water pot. Where in your life are you like that Samaritan woman? And where in your life are you like the disciples? Where in your life is Jesus seeing you and you are so excited you are transformed? Jesus saw her because Jesus loved her. Loved her completely. All of her. And due to Jesus' love, she was seen by Jesus. Jesus loves you and I the same. It may not feel like it. And that's because it's hard to be vulnerable. And, let, and yet Jesus loves all of you. Only when you can let Jesus love all of you can you be fully seen. Where are you not letting Jesus fully see you? Where are you not letting Jesus fully love you? Is it in your illness, your triggers, your traumas, your body image, your emotions, your shame, your guilt? When you let Jesus fully love you, all of you, you are seen by Jesus and it's freeing. In my life, I had to learn to be so vulnerable with Jesus so Jesus can love those aspects of myself I don't like. 
And when I have done that, what that has done for me is allow me to have a peace that no matter what happens in my life, no matter how unfathomable, Jesus' love is greater than anything I can ever want. And it allows me to live in gratitude. I don't like sharing those things with Jesus that I'm ashamed of. But when I do, I'm free. You can be free just like that Samaritan woman. Only when you let Jesus love all of you, you can be fully seen. Where do you need to be fully seen today? All you need is love. All you need is love. No one can save that can't be saved. All you need is love. All you need is love. Nothing you can see that isn't shown. Nowhere you can be that isn't where you're meant to be. All you need is love. All you need is love. Jesus is already loving you, fully seeing you. Is that enough for you to transform like this Samaritan woman? Or is Jesus' love not enough? And you're like the disciples, judging yourself and others. The choice is yours. Jesus' love is there. What are you going to do with it? Amen. Amen. And so part of what we get to do with it is where is God calling you in your time, your presence, your witness, your service, and your gifts? Where is God calling you to offer back because of Jesus' love for you. We'll have the ushers come forward. Thank you, most gracious God. Thank you for the ability to offer this small portion of what you have given to us out of your abundance. We ask, God, that you bless those who gave. And we also ask that you bless those who wanted to give but were unable to give. And we also ask, God, that you will increase and multiply this offering, that it will be to enhance your kingdom, God, that it will be overflowing and just in abundance, God, of what needs to be done to enhance your kingdom. And we ask all of these things in the marvelous, majestic name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, let's sing out of here. Jesus loves me. It's in your hymnal number something, something, something. 191. Let's sing nice and loud.
as we go forth from this place. Remember, Jesus sees you fully. May you be like that Samaritan woman and go from this place excited because Jesus sees you. And may you do better than the disciples and see others in their fullness and get them to be excited too. Amen. And it is noon, so therefore we made it an hour. God bless. Have a great Sunday, everyone. See you next week.